Hi everyone, it's Teresa, part of your Perrier leadership team, and we are continuing. Hello, 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 welcome. We are continuing with our May initiative. We're increasing awareness about the five top health risks that are that women are faced with um, in their lifetimes right now. So what we're looking at today is we're looking at breast ca breast cancer awareness. So this is something that's very important, very vital, and affects. Do you realize this this affects? Over 2,000 women, over 2,000 American women deal with this disease each year, and over 40,000 die from this disease. It's just phenomenal. So we want to get this awareness out there. Let me turn this around and say hi to you really quick. Hi, everyone. It's Teresa, part of your Paragirl leadership team, and we are continuing with our PG Honor. PG Honor is what we're doing for May, and we're increasing awareness about women's health we're honoring our past, our present, and our future. And this week, we're looking at all these health risks that we are faced with. So you can follow us here at PG Honor at Paragirls.com. And you want to use this hashtag, PG Honor, whenever you do your scopes. So what we're looking at today, thank you all so much for joining. Thank you all much for sharing this out. We really appreciate it because we want to get the information out there. So as I was saying before, over 2,000 women are suffering, American women, suffer with breast cancer each year and over 40,000 of them die uh, from this disease and it's just it's just very tragic hey pair girls hi hey CC welcome welcome I'm gonna pull up my notes really quick because there's a lot of information here but you can actually go to the CDC which is the Center for D Disease Control and you can get all this information and so I just want to go through and just hey Dr. Cutsmini how are you you are a survivor yay Beb so feel free Beb type in Type in all the comments. Let us know exactly what you went through, how tragic it was for you, how, how, what a warrior you are, how uh, phenomenal you are, how you're feeling your health and everything. So, hey, Lisa, how are you? Um, so definitely, we want to support you. If you're a breast cancer survivor, we definitely want to support you. And if you're dealing with this right now, we definitely want to support you as well. So we want to get this word out there. We want you to be heard. We want the message to be heard. So. I'm going to just briefly just go over a few little facts and also men, I'm glad to see that, men can um, get breast cancer as well. There's about 1% of men that, that actually have breast, that can get breast cancer, but again, it's over 200,000 women each year. So we're gonna look at some of these things right there. You're, in, you're a stage four breast cancer fighter. So are you in stage four right now? Is that what you're experiencing right now? Um, you do the breast walk each every year. That is fantastic. You had a lumpectomy and had radiation. It feels so blessed. Yes. Okay, but okay, Sherry. So Sherry, we want to rally you on. We want to support you and pray for you for your wellness and your healing. I'm gonna get choked up on this one. Woo! Definitely gonna get choked up on this one. Oh my goodness. Okay. So what are there are various different symptoms of breast cancer. The reason I'm getting very emotional is I just found out my 80 year old aunt was diagnosed with breast cancer just this past week. Um, so it is an equal opportunity destroyer. It really will go after the tatas. Um, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna look at the different symptoms. Um, so some of the different warning, and sometimes there are no warning symptoms. Um, sometimes it's, but there are some, and we want you to be aware of them. So if there's a new lump in your breast or the underarm, like in the armpit, Oh, thank you, Lisa. Thank you, thank you. Uh, a thickening or swelling on any part of the breast. You may have an irritation or dimpling in the breast skin. Um, can be a redness or flaky skin in the nipple area or on the breast. And I may not see all, thank you. I may not see all your comments because I am reading from all these notes here. So forgive me if I miss them, but I will go back and see them on the replay. And thank you all so much. Um, Sometimes you may see a pulling in of the nipple or pain in the nipple area. And yes, I talk with my hands a little bit. Of, I had to put those down here. Uh, also, be aware if there's any nipple discharge. It can be, other than breast milk, it can be just a, uh, it could be blood. It could be just a clear liquid. It could be a, a yellowish liquid. So any kind of discharge that's not, if you're not breastfeeding, that's something you definitely want to be aware of. And any changes in the size or the shape of your breast, and any pain in any area of your breast, you definitely, definitely want to be, you want to look at that. Now, not 
I'm not saying, and this is not saying that these are meaning that you have breast cancer. It just means that you want to be alerted to that and you want to be, you want to listen to your body. You want to know what's going on and you want to be talking to your healthcare provider about this. So thank y'all so much that are here. Thank you so much for sharing this out. Thank you so much for, for broadcasting about this later on and get this information. You must get checked regularly. Absolutely. Um, now there are, how can you lower your risk? Well, there's many factors. Yes, please type in those comments. Please keep typing those comments in there and let them know because they may miss what I'm saying, but we'll see your comments. So yes, type those in there. So some of the main factors that influence your risk for breast cancer include first being a woman, uh, being older. Uh, I said my 80 year old aunt was just diagnosed with breast cancer. So it really, uh, for women that are 50 years and older are at higher risk. Now, I'm not saying that there's women younger than that that have not experienced it because there have, there's been a significant amount, but according to the studies, a larger amount that are 50 and over do get, are at a higher risk. You was 34 when you see Sherry right there, she was 34 when she was first diagnosed. So, Sherry, how long have you been dealing with this, if I may ask? Because this is something that, you know, you're right here, you're on the front line, and we definitely want to honor you and give you a voice to talk about this. Um, other risk facts, factors include um, getting older, genetic mutations, uh, if you had an early onset of your menstrual cycle, you've had a late pregnancy, you had cancer for 12 years, stage four and five for stage four for five years. Okay, so Sherry, so are they are you still going through different types of treatment right now, or they have you in a state of remission? Just kind of give us a little bit of clarity of that so uh, for you. Um, Late or no pregnancy is also a risk factor for increasing your chances for um, breast cancer. When it says late, it's like having your first pregnancy after the age of 30 or never having a full-term pregnancy can um, have increase your breast cancer risk. Starting menopause after 55, um, not being physically active. So we just allow our body just to kind of get in this little bit of a slump, so to speak. Uh, being overweight or obese after menopause, having a uh, dense breast, and that means there's more connective tissue um, than there is fatty tissue, which sometimes can make it hard for the tumors to be seen on a mammogram. So women with dense breasts are more likely to, to get breast cancer just because they're not seen or not noticed early on. Um, and also using a combination of hormone therapy is also uh, something that increases your risk factor. You did not know that about the late pregnancy. Yes, there's a lot of information on the Center for Disease. Um, it's the cdc.org, is that where, you, that's where you wanna go to find all this information. Um, I'm sorry, I missed that, uh, Sherry. So if you wanna type that again, if you filled up to it, if not, I'll see it on the replay, but I know other people were able to see that. Uh, other risk factors, take an oral birth control contraceptives. There are certain types of contraceptive pills that increase your risk for uh, breast cancer later in life. Uh, having a personal history. Hello and good morning from Las Vegas. You're always on treatment, you're on oral chemo. Okay, all right, I did see that, okay. So Sherry, your picture looks really good. So tell me, how are you feeling these days? Are you feeling, um, are you cancer spread to your spine and your sternum? Oh, Sherry, I'm so sorry to hear that. Okay, so what is, you're, you're doing oral chemo pills, right? And you probably they probably have a, you're on a special diet of lots of really good phytonutrients as well that are that are fighting to boost your immune system. You're very tired and you have bone pain. Sherry, I'm so sorry you're experiencing that. This is tragic, and I just pray for your healing. And I thank you so much for being here and having a voice. Are you broadcasting about your treatment, about your recovery, and about what you're going through? Because you have a voice, and we and people would love to hear you. Um, so that you feel acknowledged and we want to celebrate you and celebrate your life and what you're going through. She is amazing for sharing that. Thank you, PGTV. Okay, so the other risk factor would be um, personal history of non-cancerous breast diseases. Let's see what that says. Like hyperplasia or lobular carcinomas can also be associated with that. Having a family history of breast cancer. Uh, previous treatment using radiation therapy um, and the women who took the drug 
It's DES, and I'm not going to attempt to try to say it, but you can find it on their um, on their website. And it was given to pregnant women in the United States between 1940 and 1971, and it's diethyl which is DES. And I'm, you get the chicken. You, oh, you get chicken to broadcast. Join us in Perry Girls, PerryGirls.com. We help you become more confident, and you know, just in a group of over 10,000 women, and it, we are. We're very supportive and encouraging. We'll give, we'll help you find your voice. So feel free to join us at paragirls.com right here. We would love to have you join our sisterhood, most definitely. Um, also, another one is drinking alcohol. Studies show that a woman's risk for breast cancer increases the more alcohol she drinks. Okay, so that's other things that we wanna be looking at. So let's talk about what can we do to help prevent this? What can we do to decrease our risk factors? Keep a healthy weight. We want to, I'm one of two on calling Edge Session State of Nevada. Thank you for this. You are so welcome. Thank you for being here. We hope you are, you are doing uh, periscopes and broadcasts about these issues as well so we can get this information out there. There's a lot of people that do not know about these things. It's not going to happen to me, and they kind of just put their head in the sand. We want to increase that awareness, most definitely. Thank you. We, and you're all pair girls, and if you're not in pair girls, join us. Because we love you. We want you to be in this sisterhood. We want to help give you a voice. And that's what our founder, Joanne Pham, did. She wanted to have a platform where women could shine, could find their voice. And that's what we're doing. And that's why we're here. And we want you to join us. All right. So we want to keep a healthy weight. We want to exercise regularly. Um, oh, this is a big one. This is something I have to be wary with because I'm a late night person. I step really late. And sometimes I don't get all my sleep. And it says right, research shows that lack of nighttime sleep can be a risk factor. So that's something I didn't know until I was doing all this research. So that's something I'm definitely going to be trying to change that sleep pattern, make sure I get better sleep at night. Um, don't drink alcohol or at least limit it to no more than one a day. Avoid exposure to chemicals that can cause cancer. Those are carcinogens. And, um, so we want to make sure that we reduce the amount of chemicals we enter into our home, into our bodies, into our foods. Try to eat as clean as you can as far as organic foods and such as that. Limit your exposure to radiation, x-ray, CT scans, PET scans, unless they're just medically necessary. Um, and there's also a comment in here about the hormone replacement therapy that we want to look at. So you can check that out. I'm just kind of going through a few little tidbits, and I want you to go and do a little bit more research on it. And another thing that you can do as far as decreasing your risk, if you're a childbearing and you have children breastfeeding, Breastfeeding your children helps to decrease your risk of breast cancer. So that's so important. Um, so we want to cheer that on as well. So make sure that you have, if you have a breast cancer history in your family, you want to get that checked out and stay on top of it. So do y'all know how to do a breast exam? I'm not going to do a breast exam here. Do not use antiperspirant because it, antiperspirant deodorant, it causes breast cancer. Yes, there's been studies linked to that as well. So there's the salt bars you can use, the all natural de deodorants you can use that have the essential oils and the clays and the butter so you can use that as well. Um, so doing a, so to do an exam you want to do that once a month, it's, you know, it's very easy to do. You lay down, you put a pillow behind your head and you put your right arm behind your hand or behind your head and you're laying flat and you're going to take your right hand, keep your fingers together and you're just going to go in a circular motion around the breast starting and go all the way around and see if you feel anything. Then do the other side. It's something really easy to do. Do it once a month if you feel any difference in the. Your Green Beauty Blogger, awesome Vegas Beauty Snob. I'm gonna have to check you out. I love that. Um, so this is something I want y'all to do. I want y'all to blog about this. I want you to scope about this. I want you to post it on Facebook. Increase this awareness. This is one of the top five risks as women that we are faced with is breast cancer. So that's our scope for today. You need to pick up your son. Thank you for help. You're very welcome. Thank you for being here. We're going to end this here in just a moment anyway. So thank you, Sherry. It's so nice to meet you. I look forward to meeting you in Perry Girls, and I will and I will keep you in my prayers. Most definitely have a wonderful day. So I'm going to switch my camera back around. I'm going to say bye, but I'm going to switch my camera around really quick. All right. So we're going to focus on this. Sherry, you're very welcome. Yes, and to Vegas Beauty Snob as well. 
Okay, thank you all for being here. Be sure and use the hashtag PGing Honor whenever you do your scopes, your broadcast, your Facebook post, Twitter post, and we want to get it out there, get the message out there. So let's do some information and let's save the tatas, okay, and save our lives. Okay, see y'all later. Thank you. Bye bye.